Honorable guests, Honorable Finance Minister, welcome. The theme of Conclave last year was the India moment. Well, I can confidently say the India moment has only got bigger, much bigger. Let me be yeah, ambitious, ambitious and call it the India movement. This way, we remind ourselves of the work that needs to be done so that we keep asking ourselves the big questions. What's next? What can we do today to ensure that the India moment lasts as long as possible and convert it into a movement so that it transforms India like no other in the past? To me, the best way to build a future is to have a clear vision of that future and then work towards turning that vision into reality. Today, I want to submit to you five images of India's future that I think are within our grasp. Firstly, forget about the poverty line, which is so often discussed in India, and let's convert into what I would call the dignity line. Less than a month ago, the government released data that suggested that extreme poverty in India has almost eliminated, it is now indeed restricted to less than 2% of India's population. But I must tell you that extreme poverty is a very low bar to clear. According to the World Bank, poverty is defined as a consumption expenditure of dollars, 2.15 PPV dollars a day. That's purchasing power parity. Means a dollar is about half the value of the US dollar. This means roughly 1,200 to 1,500 rupees a month, or just 40 to 80 rupees a day. In the last 10 years, the present government has done a remarkable job of lifting more than 200 people, 200 million people above the extreme poverty line. Now let's set the bar to dignity line. It's a line that measures the means to lead a life of basic dignity. That includes food, of course, but it also includes access to basic housing, electricity, clean water, education, and health care. And of course, a job that gives a basic income. I think Prime Minister Modi has grasped this idea of delivering a life of dignity for the, bottom, for the people at the bottom of the pyramid from the time he took office 10 years ago. That is why his emphasis on schemes like Swachh Bharat and delivering tap water and electricity to every household. Also, Niti Aayog does not measure poverty by poverty line anymore, but by what they call multidimensional poverty. This is a most welcome step. The current estimates suggest 11.3% of Indians are below the multidimensional poverty line. Five years from now, we should target either zero or no more than 2% of Indians below this line. That's when every Indian will have a fair opportunity at, to making what life offers to all of us. Second is education. No country has become a developed one without a good education system. In education, we have solved the enrollment problem. But what happens or doesn't happen between enrollment and graduation remains unaddressed. This shows up in the large teaching and learning gaps on the one hand and historically high youth employment, unemployment on the other. A recent survey showed 25% of 14 to 18 year olds could not read a simple class two level text in their regional language. Less than 50% of them could not solve grade two level maths. This is a very sad state of affairs that does not bode well for the future of this country. Quality of education from curriculum to pedagogy to delivery hasn't kept pace with enrollments. This is true at all levels of education, primary, secondary, and college. At college level, education must be linked to employability. Most recent data show that youth unemployment to be at 16.5%. In five years from now, we must aim to reduce our youth unemployment to no more than 5%. This has to change dramatically and quickly. If we use it seriously, AI can help us there. In a matter of months, not years, our children 
could have access to the highest quality education customized to their level of understanding, delivered to them right at their home in their native language for almost free of cost. This is distinct, do, distinctly doable because India has one of the finest public infrastructure, uh, digital infrastructure in the world. I hope the government, NGOs, and tech companies in India join to bring such solutions to every student. These are all AI images, by the way. So I see AI as a source of free intellectual energy. Let's open it up for our young minds. Thirdly, how we deliver the best health care to the remotest Indian village in the, is the next big challenge. India has been late in understanding the direct correlation between human capability and human capital. Healthcare, along with education, is the essential ingredient for converting our biggest capability into our best capital. For the next five years, we should aim to achieve the following two bringing our infant mortality to 5 per 1,000 live births from 25 right now. We've done a remarkable job in bringing our life expectancy down from 32 years at the time of independence to over 70 years right now. But now we have to focus on healthy life expect expectancy, not just life expectancy. India is the capital of just too many diseases. Like for education, for healthcare too, I think AI may be a godsend for India. It allows an inexpensive and fast way to combine the practice of medicine with the science of medicine, which is what we need to deliver best quality primary care to the remotest places in India. Fourth, make, make in India, we should, we should move to make better than the best in India. By this, I mean we should be setting world standards. And there are examples. For example, we have in India one of the world's biggest and most efficient oil refineries. Some of our seaports and the most, are the most modern. And so are our airports, are world class. At the turn of this century, how many of you would have imagined India would be exporting automobiles and being home to building the highest quality smartphones? Thanks to developments like China Plus One, and policies like Make in India, we have the tide in our favor that can take us from Make in India to make better than the best in India. We have what I would call the last mover advantage. We can start with the latest technology, especially now that we are getting into semiconductor manufacturing. I think we're at the cusp of a golden era in Indian manufacturing. Today, India accounts for little over 3% of global manufacturing, and China has little over 28%. In five years, we should aim 8% of global share. Remember, in 1995, China had only 3%. Lastly, we are on the way to become the third largest economy in the world in terms of GDP. But becoming an economic giant is not an end in itself. We have to become a great nation. We cannot rise economically and descend in our conduct and our character. Can we be a great nation without knowing which side of the road to drive on? Every year, nearly 10,000 Indians lose their lives in accidents caused by people driving on the wrong side of the road. Can we be a great nation with ever-rising mountain of garbage surrounding our urban centers? Can we be a great nation if most of our cities and towns are choking with pollution? Can we be a great nation when lynching or beating a person to death becomes commonplace? Can we be great, a great nation when we are regarded as a rape capital of the world? Also, violence against women is treated as a routine affair. Can we be a great nation if our election funding is open to question? Can we be a great nation by confusing disagreement with dissent, dissent with disloyalty, and disloyalty with treason? Can we be a great nation if we live in fear of our government? There are many more hard questions like these that I'm sure you ask yourself every day. I think most of you know the answer. 
We need to, we need to measure what I call gross domestic behavior, GDP, if you like, just as we measure GDP, so that a nation building goes hand in hand with character building. So that we become an economic giant, we also become a social and moral giant. 20 years ago, 2003 to be precise, President Clinton had told India Today Conclave something that has remained in my mind. He said, I have no doubt India will be a giant, but what kind of giant? You must become a global giant and of the right kind. So here's to becoming the right kind of giant. Like always, we have a wide range of subjects and speakers for you to listen to in the next two days. I invite you to enjoy our festival of ideas. All of India Today Group is here to host you and make the best of the two days you have spared for us. Honored guests, I thank you for your time and attention. Have a good time.